Right, this video today is gonna to be on why you won't lose weight on super low calories. Not for long, anyway. How many of you guys have been on a diet where you've lost loads of weight the first week, loads of weight the second week, and then after this point, it stalls. You don't know what to do, you're making no more progress, and you just give up because you just can't see anything else happening after week two. Right, let's talk about this word at the top, metabolic adaptation. Now, all this essentially means is, as you weigh less, you begin to burn less calories, okay? Now, there's no getting away from this if you wanna get lean. If you wanna get in good shape, this is gonna happen regardless of whatever you do. However, we wanna make this process happen as slow as possible to make sure that you burn fat and lose body weight for weeks and weeks and weeks to get in your best shape possible. Right, now, I want you to imagine we are taking a person, we've got Deborah. Deborah is going to Spain on holiday in eight weeks. She wants to get a little bit leaner, she wants to have a good time, she wants to feel good about herself on the beach. Now Deborah can take two approaches. Now the first approach she can take is the erratic drop calories as low as possible, which is the red approach. Now Deborah has started on 160 pounds. Now she's dropped her calories way, way too low and she's in a thousand plus calorie deficit. On week one, Deborah has lost 10 pounds. On week two, she has lost four pounds here. But on week three, this is where the magic happens and this is why crash diets are absolutely terrible. Her body and her metabolism has adapted. The body has realized that she's on super low calories and it has got nowhere to go. She has been in a calorie deficit of a thousand calories plus and now because the metabolism is adapted, it's allowing her to lose no more weight. Week four, she puts on a pound. Week five, she's maintained the same. Week six, she's put on another two pounds. Week seven, she's put on another four pounds. And week eight, she's put on two pounds. And this has all happened because on week three, her metabolism adapted to super, super low calories and she couldn't go any lower. And because progress was stalled, psychologically, Deborah has begun to eat more, she's getting upset, the weight loss isn't happening as quick as what it did at the start, but it is because the metabolism has adapted and she has got nowhere to go apart from do endless hours of cardio to try and create a calorie deficit, which she did at the start. So Deborah's finishing weight after eight weeks is 155 pounds making her only lose five pounds across eight weeks. On the other side, Deborah, she's 160 pounds, exactly the same circumstances at the start, and she has eight weeks until Spain. Now, Deborah has decided the way she's gonna go about it is she's gonna eat in a 400, 500 calorie deficit, tactically, and increase her output. She's gonna increase her steps daily, and she's gonna go to the gym and try and do a couple of classes or a couple of workouts per week. Nothing crazy, okay? Now, on week one, Deborah loses four pounds. On week two, three pounds. But on week three, she's still losing three pounds. Week four, she loses two pounds. Week five, loses another two pounds. Week six, she loses one pound, so it's beginning to slow down because her metabolism is again adapting to lower calories. However, it's not stalled. Week seven, she's losing another pound, and on week eight, the final week, she loses 0.5 pounds, which is still a loss, which equates to 143.5 pounds, making it a almost a 17 pound weight loss. Now, the reason we're talking about this and the reason we're trying to give you an example is so you can see the difference between doing a crash diet on the red side and basically really erratically dropping your calories and on the other side, how to do it properly, how to do it tactically. Yes, on week one and week two, Deborah would probably get disheartened and think, oh, it's only four pounds, I'm massively overweight, blah, blah, blah. But if you look at the total value at over eight weeks, she's a lot healthier and she's lost a lot more weight, lost a lot more body fat and probably feels a hell of a lot better about herself 
by eight weeks time. And this is the way you should be dieting. Right, now the whole point of this video and the whole summary of this video is because we work out macros a lot on the Academy and people always come to us and say, why are we not dropping the calories a lot lower? Now, initial, initial calories when you work out your macros and your calorie intake are important because dropping calories in dieting is like a game of cards. You don't wanna use your best cards too soon because if you use them too early, then you've got nowhere else to go. You're not gonna win the game, okay? So you wanna save your cards, your good cards, your aces, your kings and your queens until later on, just before you go on holiday. So you can drop your calories a little bit lower and total body weight lost and total body fat lost will be more and it will be greater by the end of your eight weeks or however long you wanna cut for. So it is important to start your calories high but still in a calorie deficit and then gradually, week by week, lower them down if fat loss stalls. Now a good point which we use in the academy and what we tell clients to do all the time is if fat loss stalls, give it seven to 10 days, maybe even 12 days and then recalculate your macros and if they still come out the same number, then we want you to reduce your calories by 150 calories and then fat loss shall begin to occur again, okay? If you are dropping 10, 12 pounds on the first week of a diet, you're essentially crash dieting and it means your calorie deficit is far too much. We want long, we want long sustained fat loss because this is much more beneficial than crash dieting and then ending up gaining more weight than what you initially started. We have videos on the YouTube channel and if you're in the academy already, you will have your macronutrients and calories calculated for you. So work out your own calories. Let me know how you get on. You can comment below if this is on YouTube and if you're in the academy, you've already got access to this video. But thank you and until the next video.